First of all, <coughs> this meeting is being recorded. First of all, I just want to say uh, uh, thank you uh, for that uh, introduction. Um, I uh, always like to uh, say because um, when you when you talk about um, um, my role or the division that I'm in, the Land Chemical and Redevelopment Division, that really doesn't say a lot um, uh, about um, what we do. Um, we administer a lot of programs in my division, um, um, which include hazardous waste, uh, solid waste, uh, pesticides, uh, lead-based paint, tanks, uh, brownfields, land revitalization, um, pollution prevention, and sustainable materials management, which includes food. So um, I have a lot of responsibility uh, for, uh, for all of those areas. Um, Fortunately, it's the program part uh, of those and not the enforcement piece. So that's in a, the, the enforcement for those programs in a separate place. But we we administer the the, the regulatory um, uh, effort. So first of all, uh, I, I am so elated to be here. Uh, I want to thank you all for attending the Southwest Missouri Local Food Summit. Um, and um, we would also like to thank the Wichita Environmental Finance Center for planning and hosting today. Uh, this summit is an excellent way to learn more about food loss and waste, and there will be opportunities over the next few hours to engage with others in, in your community to find solutions. And, um, and what a great lineup, I must say, over the two sessions uh, there were, and fantastic speakers, uh, including the city of Springfield and, and Silver Dollar City. So if you missed Tuesday, uh, please check out uh, the recordings. So uh, next slide, please. So food waste hurts our environment, the economy, and our communities. Every year, over 30% of the food brought to market is wasted. This is enough food to fill the Rose Bowl every day, 365 days a year. Here in Missouri, 49% of that food waste comes from our kitchens at home. Next slide, please. So why would the Environmental Protection Agency be interested in reducing food loss and waste? Lots of reasons. Food waste is detrimental to the environment. More than half of food waste goes to the landfill where it releases methane. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. However, around 90% of the environmental impact from wasted food comes from producing it and bringing it to market. This can affect the environment in many ways. Next slide, please. 140 million acres of agricultural land equivalent to the size of New York State and California combined is formed annually to produce, produce food that, excuse me, produce food um, that goes uneating. Much land has been deforested to create farm crops throughout our history. Deforestation causes erosion, neg negativ negatively impacts water quality, and reduces biodiversity. Next slide. 778 million pounds of pesticides goes to waste annually to produce food that goes uneating. This causes a multitude of issues. This reduces microorganisms needed to enrich soil. It also reduces pollinator populations, including birds, bees, and other beneficial insects. Another lost resource from wasting food is fertilizer. 14 billion pounds, and that's billion with a B, of fertilizer goes to waste every year. Much of, much of this wasted fertilizer ends up in our waterways and moves downstream toward other large bodies of water. The nitrogen and phosphor phosphorus in fertilizer encourage harmful algal blooms. The algal blooms can result in fish kills and have a negative impact on marine biodiversity. This interrupts the global food web. Next slide, please. Now, let's talk about water. Growing wasted food accounts for 30% of all freshwater use in the United States. 
America's freshwater aquifers no longer replenish at the rate of usage. Much of the Southwest is facing current and future challenges with water scarcity. The U.S. Geological Survey map on the right shows U.S. fresh groundwater. All aquifers in yellow and orange are not replenishing at a rate to keep up the usage. Next slide, please. And who pays? All of us pay the high cost of food waste. When you add in other costs of wasted food, labor, manufacturing, energy, transportation, refrigeration, you can see the price is staggering. According to USDA study using data from 2010, the average household of four wasted over $1,484 a year in groceries. So just imagine what this number would be now with inflation. Now more than ever, many are having trouble finding the resources to feed their families. Thank you. Food insecurity is defined as a lack of consistent access to enough food for an active, healthy life. Unfortunately, the cost hits underserved communities the hardest because food accounts for a higher percentage of total income. According to Feeding America, more than one in 10 Missourians are food insecure. Many of these are seniors and children. Much of the food that is sent to landfill is edible and healthy food and could be used to address food insecurity. Thank you. So what can we do? The EPA has a food recovery hierarchy that has offered prioritized actions that have stood the test of time, including 10 years of scientific research on food waste. Next slide. So the most preferred way to reduce food waste is source reduction, preventing food waste before it happens. An example might be a food manufacturer using new inventory protocols to reduce wasted food. It could also be as simple as making a shopping list and sticking to it. Thank you. If you can't prevent having leftovers and it is safe and healthy food, use it to feed hungry people, which is another way to prevent food waste. During this summit, you have learned of the Bill Emerson Act to protect, to protect donors and tax incentives for our businesses. Next slide. Thank you. Although local laws vary widely, the next choice for excess food is to use it to feed animals. It is often more economical to feed animal food scraps rather than having them hauled to a landfill. Includes upcycling animal byproducts to make pet food or feeding animals spent grain from breweries. Regulations vary by state. Safe food varies by animal. Excess food can also be put to industrial uses. High strength liquid, organic waste, and food waste produce biogas using anaerobic digestion. Fats, oils, and grease can be rendered into a raw material to make soaps and cosmetics. Next slide, please. Thank you. Composting is the final tool in the toolbox to keep food out of the landfill. Composting returns nutrients back to the soil, sequesters carbon, and can be used to restore depleted farmland. Compost can improve soil, promote higher crop yields, and enhance water retention. Increased water retention reduces erosion and can be used to mitigate climate events like droughts and flooding. Next slide, please. Now, finally, I just want you to keep in mind that there are no bad options when reducing food waste. It is important to find the options that work best for you, your organization, or your community. The hierarchy is just one tool to help you prioritize your actions based on environmental impact. Reducing food waste in your community and donating excess healthy food can save you money, be great for the environment, and be a tool to reduce regional food insecurity. We look forward to some great conversations today. Uh, I look forward to, 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 to hearing uh, 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 your thoughts um, uh, on this topic. 
and um, and you know look forward to finding new ways that we can all work together. So, again, on behalf of EPA Region Seven, thank you for attending today's food summit and for your time today. And uh, if you have any questions of me, I am um, I am open to uh, receive those. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, DeAndre. I really appreciate that. If anyone has questions, um, feel free to unmute or you can pop them into the chat, but feel free to ask away. That was a great presentation, uh, D'Andre. I'm Robert Bela, Corticulture Field Specialist in the Joplin area in Missouri in Southwest Corner. I'll be um, going on, on Color 10 TV in Springfield in a couple of hours to talk about composting food waste, what homeowners can do. And I'm wondering if there are any resources that you would recommend homeowners turn to uh, for information on composting food waste? Well, um, I, I will tell you, uh, Robert, and I, I, if I, I wish I had it handy, I could put in the chat. I'll, I'll look for it over the course of the meeting. But um, um, you know, EPA does have a, uh, a, a site on its web page that's dedicated to this topic. And there are a lot of resources that um, that um, I think uh, may be useful and beneficial for um, for uh, for those who are looking to do more uh, in this area. All right. I will I'll, I will try to you. find the link. All right, thank you very much. You're so welcome. I just put that link in the chat for you, DeAndre. Oh, it's thank the you. EPA reducing impact by using composting. Um, so feel free to to dive into that, Robert. All right, I have a I got question. It. Um, I'm a librarian in Springfield, and we've been talking about um, having a community fridge. My manager is worried about um, like the liability. You had mentioned the Bill Emerson Act. Um, do you know if that would extend to like a library since it's not technically a nonprofit organization? I, I don't know right offhand, but um, I could I could dive into that and find out. And, and um, respond. We do uh, a lot of work, by, by the way, in Springfield. Um, uh, earlier, I, uh, I was uh, telling um, um, uh, the group that um, um, uh, we've done a lot of work with, uh, with, with Terry and, uh, uh, and Olivia, and I apologize, I don't remember their last names with the city, but we, we work quite frequently uh, with them on a number of issues because I have so many programs uh, in my group, but I can certainly um, find, find the response to that question for you. That would be great. Thank you so much. You're, you're so welcome. Crystal, we have a community fridge project here in Wichita as well. Um, if you would like after this, I can connect with you and connect you with the folks that set those up and, and help you with those kind of liability concerns. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Any more questions for DeAndre? Hey, Michelle, this is Jim Callier. Hey, Jim. I just wanted to add but on the Bill Emerson Act, I know in this particular summit, um, the folks at the Harvard Law Clinic or Institute weren't available, but we did record those sessions from previous summits. And that might be a resource for people attending this particular summit to take a look at, to get information and be able to view or even share links to the previous summits that did have various presentations on the Bill Emerson Act, as well as the tax advantages, because that will, those are great presentations and very interesting. You beat me to it, Jim. I was going to mention that very thing that the last few summits we have had um, folks from the Harvard Food Policy and Law Clinic talk about those liability issues. And as Jim mentioned, they were unavailable this time. However, um, they did speak at our St. Louis Food Summit and spoke about the various tax um, incentives and other implications specific to Missouri. So when I send out the thank you for attending email with resources, I will link to that video so that you can have access to that, that resource as well. And even though they weren't able to come today uh, or for this summit, um, they are always willing to talk with folks and, and help you through some of those challenges. 
So I just want to say uh, thanks to Jim. Um, uh, Jim is uh, one of the stalwarts in my in my program who works on a variety of issues as it relates to sustain, sustainable materials management, um, and also uh, Penny Harrell um, in my group. There, there. Uh, Penny is a short timer, but uh, Jim is also a great resource if you if um, if you don't already know. Yes, Jim, I will I will second that for sure. We work closely with Jim and Penny for these food summits and it has just been fantastic to work with them. So yeah, they are definitely a resource to reach out to. I will say DeAndre was mentioning during the um during the the part where um he was going through the hierarchy and talking about animal food and specifically the um like pet food and treats and whatnot. And uh a funny story is I purchase like animal training treats or just treats to give my dogs. Um, I purchase upcycled ones and my my dad bought me a, a package of treats to give to them that was just your basic, you know, from the store kind of things and they won't eat them. They they only want the, the upcycled treats. So I don't know if it's, I just have picky dogs or